Hey everyone, it's me, X Canadensis. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I post a new doll related video almost every single day. And in today's video, finally, we are going to be unboxing the Freak Do Chic Comic Con Draculaura doll. I'm so, so excited about this one. This to me is one of the like most beautiful monster idols I've ever seen. According to the photos, I could hate her in real life. Let's find out. So I already cut the box open just cause I don't know. Do you need to see me cut in cardboard? But I wanted to reveal the doll together. Ah, okay. Let's do this. Oh, the box isn't fully square. It's like kind of a trapezoid shape. Okay, who cares? <laughs> Let's get in here. <gasps> okay, so this is actually really cool, guys. So look, it says Freak to Chic Draculaura, right? But doesn't that font look a little strange? Watch this. Freak to Chic Draculaura. It, it works both ways. And the reason for that, I think, is because she's she's the trapeze at Freak to Chic, the, the carnival that they're doing. Uh, isn't that cool? The circus that they're doing. Uh, and actually, fun fact, if you didn't know, my favorite Generation 1 Monster High line is Freak Too Chic. So when I found out they were doing it, oh my god, her face is so pretty. When I found out they were doing another Freak Too Chic doll, I like lost my mind. Look at her! Thank goodness mine has a good face. I was genuinely worried. Oh my god. Wow. Okay, so let me move the camera so we can take a look at the packaging. Here she is. So she's meant to be displayed upside down and you can tell because of the bats, the skelet, and I mean, also she's the trapeze and she's a vampire. So she's gonna be hanging upside down like a bat. And oh my God, this looks amazing. This is so good. And I love that this area is like holographic glitter up here. It's just a really, really impressive box. It's gorgeous. So anyone who leaves their dolls in box is probably gonna be pretty happy with this one. And then if we turn it around, you can see, so this perplexed me a bit. So this would be Jennifer, right? Jennifer is the one that has the fire breathing thing at Freak to Chic, but this is clearly not Jennifer. And um, you can see the curtains again up here are sparkly. I love it. The silhouettes of the other ghouls is like really pretty, but I think they're all supposed to be the same ghoul. Maybe they're Dracula. They're not Dracula though, because she has ears. I don't know. It's like a mixture of everybody. Um, and then this would have been Torali, right? Because that's the tightrope walker, but that's not Torali. And then down here, Oh, that's so cute. It says all of the designers' names. So you can see that. That is awesome. And then it says Monster High. I love that they've been crediting the designers by name lately. I think that's super cool because um, it's not super common. Although I know a lot of designers probably want to be uh, private because the doll community is weird. And then we have, this would be Frankie in theory, but it's not. And again, with that holographic glitter, it looks awesome. And then let's open up the packaging. Let me prop it back up. So... Is it Velcro? It sounds like Velcro. Sometimes it's a magnet, sometimes it's Velcro. I honestly prefer Velcro because magnets leave like a big gouge generally with the Disney packaging. All right, and then it says Freak Do Chic Draculaura. And all right, so we got to get this off because this is a whole thing. Oh, this rocks. It's actually a giant bat. And look, okay, so there's Frankie and Torlai. And there's a bunch of smoke. And then we have Goliope's Shadow. I love Goliope's original shoes, they're so cool. And then over here, we've got Jennifer. So they are here. They're just not on the other part of the packaging. I love that they included them again with new artwork. That is so cool. And this is just a giant bat. So you could display this as like a poster, which I'm honestly probably gonna do because that kind of rocks. And then here is Draculaura in the inner packaging. So I wonder what the back says or like, oh, cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, step right up, step right up. See the amazing Draculaura. Ooh, I wonder if she comes with one of the posters for the Freak Do Chic playset. Um, and it says the daring acro bat. Oh my god, I didn't pick that up. It's bat. <laughs> acro bat. That's really cute. Look at her in there. She looks so cute. Sorry, I'm using this to prop the box up so that you guys have better lighting, just so you know. And then, wow. Okay, really cool artwork. And down here is that Dracula logo again. Whoever designed this it is getting a promotion, I decided, because that is so cool. And then it says, bring the being the latest act in the Freak Do Chic makes me feel like a total scare devil. I love sitting on the trapeze, looking down at the crowd before dramatically swinging forward and spinning upside down in the air. The lights dancing off the sparkles of my costume. As I flip into a somersault, the crowd is dazzled by my bat wings. As my clawsome heels grip the trapeze, ooh, that's... I don't know about that. <laughs> That's scary. And I soar like a true creature of the night. I think being an acro bat is better than being a real bat. And I don't think I'll ever come down. Oh yeah, because Dracula like actually couldn't really transform into a bat. Oh, that's so cute. Okay, uh, this rocks, but we are getting her out of the packaging. I don't think she has her Freak to Chic poster, which is a shame because that was a thing. All of them came with like a cardboard poster you could put into the playset. I was thinking like, oh my God, I want to put it in my playset so she can be the star, but that's fine. All right, so... Let's get her out of the box now. I'm super excited. 
So getting the little cardboard tabs out was really stressful. So I ended up using a Rainbow High pencil to kind of like the Rainbow High sized pencil to get her out. Um, but otherwise, very simple unboxing. The Skelector like movie tie-in dolls, whatever they're called, I don't know, um, were really difficult to unbox and like were really easy to rip the packaging. So I appreciate this. Dracula is now out of the packaging and already right off the bat. Ha, get it? <laughs> she looks so good she looks better than she did in the photos i had some qualms with her in the photos that i still do feel the same way about but i'm less bothered by it in person than i was in the photos and we'll get to those there's definitely some negative points to this doll but i think this is among my top three favorite collectors they've ever done she looks so good and i haven't even gone through and looked at all the details yet i'm just stunned and the most exciting thing to me about this doll is that they are continuing Freak Du Chic. Now, Freak Du Chic is already one of my favorite lines, so that I'm already biased, but even if it wasn't Freak Du Chic, I think it's so cool that other than Power Ghouls, they're actually continuing old lines, because didn't Power Ghouls first debut with a Comic-Con doll, so that's different to me, but continuing old fan favorite lines with a new character is so exciting, and I really hope they continue to explore this, either by designing new characters like they've done with Draculaura, or by bringing back dolls that never actually came out like the drama club classroom draculaura stuff like that please this is 100 percent like listening to the fans and like delivering something special and it's so cool i don't mind having totally original ideas obviously i enjoy those too but this is so good i'm so so excited about that anyway i just had to get that out of the way because i'm just so excited <laughs> about this doll i think she's awesome so Let's begin our review. I really hope they continue to do new screening styles that are along these lines. I really appreciate that they're doing new screening styles for a lot of the Skelector dolls. Like, um, the Honkator Midnight Runway Frankie is another one of my all-time favorite Monster High faces ever. So, clearly, they're, like, letting the new team do the faces in a new way. And I just love it. Because one of my biggest problems with G1 of Monster High is a lot of the faces are kind of off, especially on Draculaura. I've talked about this opinion a lot before. So... This is just, wow, using the original sculpt but with a new screening that fits it so much better is really, really exciting. I just think she looks so good. As always, let's start out by looking at her face and I think that, I know I said this is my favorite G1 Monster High face ever, but regardless of that fact, I think that the eyelashes really work here. Sometimes the rooted in eyelashes, as much as I love them and think they're really exciting to have, sometimes they throw off the whole look, but in this case, Oh my god, they fit so well, which I'm very surprised by, because again, often they throw off the whole look. They just look really, really good here, but let's move them out of the way and look at that eyeshadow, because look at that. It's pink to a blended black. It's very, very cute, and I believe it is still printed on, but the resolution's a lot higher. Like, you can see the lower resolution if you really zoom in, but it's not something that bothers me if it's well done like that. And the yellow above it, too, just looks so good. It contrasts so well, and I really like that she has some pretty intense eye makeup with the pink in the inner corner area. I feel like they don't often do the makeup that far inward, and it looks really good. Also, the heart blush looks so cute, and the little heart beauty mark up here, and also having the little dots, which was kind of like a vintage makeup thing. Oh my god, it looks so good. And then, of course, we've got like the Harlequin look here with the big, long, like, triangle eyelash with the dot on top so good. I also just think Monster High dolls look so much better with thick eye eyebrows. Like, those thick brown eyebrows look awesome. And then the lips, I really love the lip liner on this one. I feel like a lot of G3 dolls that have lip liner look a little off, but I feel like this looks awesome. That looks really good. And you've got the two-toned lip that I think looks amazing too. This is just gorgeous. And I know this doll had a higher budget than the others, so there is that, but like, wow, we... She looks amazing. And then over here, I love that her earrings are bats doing the trapeze. Isn't that so cute? Oh my gosh, it's her. And the earrings are plated. We'll get to that. It's important that we point out which accessories are plated and which ones aren't. Maybe you can guess what my biggest criticism with this doll is just by hearing that. And then, so this I'm confused by a bit. She has a pink plated headpiece. It's the bat hat. And I love this headpiece. I love the bat ears. I think the sculpt is super cute. I love that it's not just straight up bat ears. I love that it looks quilted uh, and like the little puff balls, like it's really cute, but it's plated and there's no other pink plated accessories anywhere and it only really matches with the foil on the cape. So um, again, we'll get to, we'll get to that. I think that I, w I wish that this wasn't plated is um, how I feel about it which sucks because that's a big like piece to have a criticism about right like it's the focal point of the headpiece but I, I don't I don't hate it but I, I 
would prefer it the other way. And then let's take a look at her rooting pattern. It's just saran, so it's got a good rooting pattern. She does have some kind of styling wax in her hair. It's not gel, it's not hard, but there's definitely some kind of product in there. Oh, look at the bow with the skelet on the back. So cute. And her hair, it's a little flat from the packaging, but as you can see, it's styled into these ringlets. It's gorgeous. If I were to brush this out with um, a metal comb and some water, I feel like it would get right back to the way it's supposed to be. It wouldn't be kind of flat. So this is beautiful. I hope we see more Monster High dolls with this saran that's super curly like this because god it looks amazing. It's so so pretty. It's just a little messy from packaging and I don't like to fix it before I do my reviews because I want to honestly show what your doll could potentially look like when you get them. If I like make the doll perfect before the review that defeats the purpose of a review I think. Anyway so now we have her little tie thing, necklace thing, I don't know. It's also plated. It's a bow and you've got like a little rib piece and a neck piece so it is rubber banded on now and just for you guys I'll cut that off even though that's gonna make it fly off my doll all the time now. Um, there's another rubber band up here. We'll cut. Careful, I don't want to cut the tool. Okay. Oh, I actually did not need to cut that, but it's fine. Okay. So this is what this piece looks like. This is actually really cool. Uh, I don't know why it's plated. Again, I guess it could be like a metallic ribbon is what they're going for. I don't know. Um, but we're gonna put that back on for now. I will be taking off pieces so that we can look at each individual piece on her because it looks like we've got a lot of different pieces on this doll. Sorry, y'all. It was interfering with the stand a little bit, but as you can see, they both have plenty of space. Okay, so I think we have a separate little clown ruff up here. So I really like that this actually has Velcro. That's really handy, and it's just made out of tulle. Very simple. Looks adorable. No hemming, but I don't expect hemming on something like that. And then we have the cape, and let me see. Yeah, this is totally separate. And then the cape has a tie around the neck, as well as little wrist attachments made out of elastic material and you can see the cape is bat shaped it's laser cut it's not hemmed I don't mind that this isn't hemmed personally uh, because of the material and I don't think it's going to be fraying over time and it looks like it has two layers and they're slightly different in size so you've got a shorter one in the front and then a longer one in the back and the tassels are not attached to this by the way it's just the bat cape see so totally separate piece the the tassels are attached to another piece that we'll get to later so yeah i like that this is double-sided but i also like that it comes apart i feel like this doll has a lot of fun parts that like fly around which is really cool because if you're doing some kind of display with the trapeze accessory which we'll get to later you have a lot of moving parts which i think is super super fun and freak du chic also had a lot of moving parts so it's super cool and then she has a leotard that is made out of a black stretchy material that has some gold interwoven within I like this material a lot. I feel like it's something that either we haven't seen in Monster High or we've only seen very rarely. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I can't think of a Monster High doll I have that has this material, but potentially there has been one. But it's a very interesting choice for Monster High, I think. And then um, the leg openings here have little ruffles, which look really, really good. Very dense ruffles, actually. And you can see the same thing going on at the wrists. And there's some kind of bodysuit underneath, which just, I'll show it here. It's kind of like a higher neckline but not a turtleneck which is I think is good because it would have been really bulky here to have the ruff and a turtleneck and bat wings but you do get some skin poking through there and yeah just long sleeves all right moving down the legs are just covered with the what I think is a bodysuit it could be not a bodysuit we will find out shortly and oh moving up the little I don't know what to call these little strips of fabric are something similar to organza they've got a ironed on or painted on stripey thing going on which is very reminiscent of the other freak to chic dolls and it's all sewn into the butt of the leotard here so yeah and i think they look really good i think that this is a very important piece for making it match with the other freak to chic dolls all right, so now we get to the part that I have an issue with, which sucks because if you guys are Monster High people, you know the shoes are the best part. And these shoes rock, but I have a big problem with the way they blend with the rest of the outfit. So, okay, first of all, you guys know one of my biggest pet peeves in the doll world is when you have like an open shoe of any kind and the leggings just kind of stop there. It looks weird. I almost wish there were no leggings because that would just work better with the shoes. So that just looks really weird, but it's not bothering me too much here, but it's just so strange. 
to like tie the ribbon over the pants like that unless they come all the way down it's confusing um but that's actually not my issue it's not bothering me too much here uh the shoes relatively simple up top you've just got ribbons that are tied and then of course it's cut in the back so even though it's very well sculpted in the back you can't really see it too much which is fine and then the shoe itself is pretty simple too it's just got some like what looks like stitched detail but of course it's sculpted on um really good sculpted detail they kind of look like ballet shoes very cute and then you've got some little curtains down like like in a circus tent yeah so shoes are overall fairly simple let's see if there's anything on the bottom nothing on the bottom and then you have these hands okay when it said you use the heels to grab the trapeze i was like i don't know that sounds really dangerous like i've, I've fallen off my pogo stick because i've done it in heels before because they get stuck so i was like i don't know i wouldn't do that hurtling in the air but of course it's monster high i should have known their actual hands uh this is extremely cute and look they're wearing gloves you've got a little is this also called a ruff when it's here probably not but like the little clown ruffles on the wrist you've got like some kind of fishnet situation on the hand or the arm and then the hand itself is really well sculpted look how cute that is that is so cool and then these on in the packaging they were actually gripping the bar so let me show you isn't that so cool and it actually holds it really really well but it's still relatively easy to get it off and on again not that i'm showing that very well there you go so that is very very cool uh i'm very very impressed and you can see a lot of black dust here from her outfit so that's a little weird um it's probably just because it's a netted material a netted material that was laser cut okay so now for my issue with the shoes i hate when they're i wish that they were just black or something i mean i like that they're gold because that makes it work with the rest of the outfit but i hate when there's plated accessories that are meant to be the same finish as non-plated accessories because it looks really really weird um i either wish that this had been this material or the shoes had been this material but plated shoes wouldn't really work because they would like chip and also just shatter so that's not ideal either but i don't know i feel like it really throws it off to have plated and non-plated together and that's my biggest issue with this doll i think is i don't like that the hat is plated and i don't like the shoes aren't plated i don't know but i love plated accessories that's one of my favorite things in doll form to see is like plating because it just looks so cool so I don't know how to feel. I don't know. There's definitely something off in that way. It's not something off that makes me like hate the doll or something, but it's something that's just slightly off. And yeah, I don't know. People absolutely hated this doll. I, I think they just, it's freak to chic, you know, it's supposed to be very circusy, but I think that's not what people uh, were expecting. I thought freak to chic was a fan favorite line though. I'm a fan and it's my favorite, let's say. All right, so since we were finished looking at the main outfit, here she is with some layers shed. I definitely prefer her with the cape, but this is actually cute. Like, I actually like this. Without the plated hat, this would be extremely cute uh, just to display her like this. I think that there's a lot of really good display options with this one, which is pretty exciting. And I didn't point out the gloves earlier, so I thought I would now. I'm pretty sure I've seen this exact sculpt used on another doll. Was it Pennywise? I think these are the hands from Pennywise. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, they look cute. I really like the little stitch lines around the fingers. just very delicate and cute. Also, while I was taking off the cape, um, if you're not somebody who likes to do, like, halter-type doll accessories, don't take off your Dracula doll's cape because, like, oh my god, this is really long. They looped it around her neck so many times and it was tied in the tiniest knot. It's going to be really hard to get that off, but anyway, that's what the cape looks like. And again, it's really cool that it's two pieces. Like, isn't that so neat? And I love... The diamond pattern with the foiling the foiling matches the hat perfectly which makes me like the hat a lot better all right so for her extra accessories this is her trapeze bar we're going to take off the leotard after this but um i'd like to show the accessories real quick so it's gold just a metallic paint matches with the shoes actually it's somewhat flexible but i think you could snap it in half so be careful it's got just a simple ribbon it's tied here and sewn here and here and yeah, this kind of looks like like a fancy pole or a rope maybe. And then the bats have their wings spread and there's a little bar between the wings to hold the ribbon. And yeah, both sides look great. And then Count Fabulous, Dracula's pet grown man. Um, I really like this is like an exclusive version. It's just got extra paint. So he's got like clown paint on his little face and the hearts actually continue all the way around, which is super cool. And yeah, just a little man. Very, very cute. All right. So now we are going to get that leotard off. And I'm just very curious if these are separate pieces or not. I hope that they aren't. I think just having it be a bodysuit would be cool. But I'd also like to remove the leggings just to see what that would look like. So I don't know. We'll see. All right. As expected, 
it is a full bodysuit, but I'm also very excited. I was genuinely worried from the stock photos that this was going to be like, all the pieces were going to be sewn onto this and they weren't going to be separate pieces. So I'm just very grateful. And I know this doll's pretty expensive, but you know, I've been unpleasantly surprised with Mattel before, even with collector dolls. So I'm pleasantly surprised with this. Look at her. This is really cool. She actually looks really cool just like this. It's not a very monster high look, but it is very cute. I also took the shoes off. So the leggings, they do go decently far down. I think it's just the fact that they have such long feet because of the way that they're standing um, that makes it look especially weird because it just looks like she was wearing capris, but clearly she's not. Um, you can see the shoe better here. Very cute. So in theory, that's what that would look like. But of course she's got leggings, so it gets held open more. Super cute. Super, super cute. All right. So, and I think this is like a really good piece for restyling. You just have to cut these off, but I mean, you probably don't want to do that with the Comic-Con doll, but maybe, I don't know. Um, this doll has huge restyling potential. All of the pieces are really, really cool. And I think would like function really well for those of you who are way more creative than I am. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to bring over my other collector jacket Laura dolls for comparison and um, we'll get to our final thoughts. And then she will join my Freak to Chic shelf. She's going to be the collector doll that does not hang out with the other collector dolls because she's a freak to chic doll, which I'm so excited about. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, that's it for this video, part one, actually, because part two of that's it for this video is going to be her with the other freak to chic dolls. But I wanted to show her with the other collector Draculauras. Off the top of my head, this is every collector Draculaura, right? Other than real drama, who I do have, but she, she's not really relevant here. Um, this doll's not really relevant here either, but I like her, so she can stay. Um... It's hard to decide who my favorite Collector Draculaura is. I can tell you right now this one's my least favorite, which I think is an unpopular opinion, but I don't know. Um, this one did the least interesting things for me. She's really cool, though. She has a lot of really cool stuff going on. Um, also, I think the face was not very good on this one. I think this is the best face by far. This one's quite different, which I love, but I think that kind of removes her from the discussion. Um, and then this one is so good. I love the face on this one, too. Um, and then, see, so Freak to Chic's the most different. Uh, and I think that's why people don't like this doll. But to me, like, this is this is what Monster High is. Monster High is not super fashionable, you know? Um, and this doll's super more fashionable, and I think that's really cute. This doll's more fashionable. I like her outfit. But I feel like this is really the essence of Monster High, at least for me. I know for other people it might be different, but for me, like, this is Monster High. And this, this like, this doll and, funny enough, Midnight Runway Frankie, who people can't stand, <laughs> um, like, those are Monster High to me. So it's really cool to see them doing that again, because I think doing a more fashionable, more, like, everyday wear type one is really fun too but this is like what I'm after and this doll also like so ridiculous and fun like this outfit is so mind-blowing and so much fun um and yeah I love that there's quite a bit of difference between the collector Dracula dolls uh this one's not wearing it but she comes with a cape actually um and that's my criticism they all have a bat wing cape of some sort which uh, yeah, she's Draculaura, like, it works, it makes sense, but, like, I don't know. Maybe we could think of something more interesting. I, I think this is the most interesting one, um, because this one, this one's different, at least, because it comes over the shoulder. I don't know, uh, but I love Midnight Runner Draculaura. I don't think she's perfect, but to me, like, as a Monster High doll, I think she is so cool, and, um, do I think she's worth the price point? Probably not. None of them really are, uh, I think she's more worth the price point than others for me, for, like, especially with that packaging. That packaging is really, really cool, uh, but I don't really care about the packaging as much because I unbox her, but most people don't with collector dolls, so uh, it, it is important. It is an important part of the discussion to have cool packaging. Uh, I'm in love. I think this doll's awesome. I think she is such a, like, wonderful entry, uh, uh, like, into the Skelector family, and I'm just so excited. I, I'm so grateful. I was so nervous I was going to miss out on this doll somehow. Um, and I'm just so glad that she is here. And she's just so pretty. Just such a cool doll. And ee, look at her. Look at her. Oh my god. And then, I mean, this feature of like actually being able to flip her upside down. I love that they made her the trapeze. And I... <laughs> That acrobat thing, I, I don't know how they thought of that. Even though that's really on the nose, I, did, I didn't even, that didn't occur to me. Like, this is so cool. You can actually, like, ah, uh, I love her. I love this doll. Okay, now it's time. Let's move her over to the Freak Du Chic zone. I'm so excited. Look, you guys. Here's my Freak Du Chic. I also just, like, scarnival with them because they were, like, a tie-in line. So here they all are together. 
I'm so happy to have Draculaura in the line. She looks awesome. I do think that the plated materials kind of throw her off because nobody else has anything like that. This material matches quite well, like the one that was used on the shoes in this. Um, but these two are also kind of odd ones out because they have the like more black and white color scheme. So it's not that weird to have her be like that because these were the Target exclusives and then this is our Comic-Con exclusive. So right now I wanted Goliope to be holding her, but having Goliope hold her makes her head basically scrape the ground. So I think I'm going to hang her off that. And this is the poster I was talking about, by the way. They all came with a little cardboard poster, a little art card thing that you could stick in there. You can see like, you can stick it in there. And I thought that was so cute. Um, but yeah, look at them. Okay, hold on. I'm actually gonna try to put her up there on the flag and see if that looks any better. All right, so here's everybody now. I like Draculaura kind of hanging here better, although she is still kind of scraping the ground of this place up. But if you hang her over the little flag thing, she actually fits here quite well. And I just like Goliope to be controlling the like marionette honey swamp. I think that's really cute. Um, so that's normally how I have them displayed. And I definitely could prop Goliope up on one of these and then have Dracula hanging down a lot more because Goliope can't really hold Dracula right but when I propped her on I think I had her hand here it worked so uh but yeah I love Freak to Chic it is such an iconic special line and I'm just so grateful to have another one in my collection I hope they continue more lines if they do what would you want to see this is my answer but obviously they're not going to do that but can you imagine like a a special edition fairy monster hide all how cool that would be sweet screams would be a really exciting one i mean there's so many good collector type lines well like i don't mean like they're made for collectors like these they're play line you know but i feel like there's a lot of positive stuff for collectors in all of them um one thing i will say when you see her in the full lineup here is that Having this be featureless makes her stand out. Um, again, I don't really mind her standing out. It's not like negative, but she definitely looks more like something I customized as opposed to the printed fabrics on these. But at the same time, I prefer the higher quality textiles to the printed fabric, but I definitely see the criticism there. I don't know. I just think she rocks and I'm very happy. Very, very happy to have her. Probably my favorite of all the collectors. I kind of messed up my collector area taking down a few of them a second ago, but like, yeah. I mean, ignoring the, like, movie tie-in ones, the, among the actual, like, Skelector ones, this is my new favorite, the Star Rocks. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I'd love to know what you guys think. Okay, bye!